Hello, welcome back. Today I'm here to talk to you guys about reading and writing in English. It was actually a suggestion from one of you guys. Julia, thank you so much for suggesting this video. I think it's so important to talk about these things because the four abilities, reading, writing, speaking, listening, are connected. So a lot of you guys are worried about your speaking, but you have to remember that in order for you to improve your speaking, there are other things you have to do. So we're gonna talk about reading and writing in English. And the first thing I want you guys to, to think about, and I will help you think about that, is the learning process which you went through as a child in your language in terms of reading and writing. This is such a great structure in terms of, it's like saying regarding, about, I am referring to your reading and your writing, okay? So I am going to use my children and what's happening with them and what happened with them already to help you think about your own learning journey and everything that you went through with Portuguese or whatever your first language is and you might be going through with English but you're not noticing. The first thing that happened, I'm going to show you some books, the first thing that happened with my kids was I taught them to read in English. But at the same time, we were working on spelling and writing, you know, kind of helping them develop the skills as opposed to just going, boom, this is it, this is what you have, you know. So the first thing, obviously, they started to learn to read were very simple words. Very easy to read words. Words like, and I'm talking about English here, words like um, hat. Because when you look at the word hat, you've got all of the right sounds for each letter. H, H, A, A, T, T. So connecting all of these sounds, you've got hat. So we started with the very basic and short words. And then we moved on to basic and short sentences. Very short and very simple. Then we started looking at some new words, like words they were not used to, and words that are a little bit strange in terms of sound, but important. So words like hear, it's quite difficult to learn to read that word if you think about it. So we started with those words. And then we looked at slightly longer sentences, but still quite short, just a little bit longer than before. And then we started looking at some very basic and simple books for children. When I say basic and simple, I don't mean the words are very easy. No, I don't. But I do mean the storyline is very simple. So it's easy to remember what you're reading. I'm saying all of this to you because I'm trying to help you with your reading. So try to understand what I'm doing here. I'm not just telling you what happened with my kids for nothing. I'm sharing this with you so that you understand what you have to do with your reading to help you really feel that you are improving. So this was a book I read a lot to both my children. So Dominic, when he was about two, we started when he was about half one and we read it a lot until he was about half three. So for about two years, we read it a lot. And it was the same with Naomi, exactly the same thing. But Mimi still likes this one. She's six and she still likes it because it's cute, I think. So if you look at it, oops, clearly old. <laughs> it is old, I told you. We've had it for years, so we need to glue it here, actually. So anyway, uh, if you look at it here, if you look at the letters, it's very simple writing. So it's in bold, it's big letters, which is important. And it says, Bella the Blueberry Fairy must not be late. She flies out of a house and down to the gate. So you've got the rhyme as well. Late gate. This helps you with your reading, helps you find your flow, okay? Lots and lots of pictures, obviously, and lots of colour. We moved on to small paragraphs, very small paragraphs. So the kids were able to read some of this book, parts of it, and then small paragraphs from something else. Whenever we were reading, I was always showing them punctuation. What a comma is, 
what a full stop is, what the exclamation mark is, what the question mark is, what the quotation marks are, what italics represent, all of those things, because then they were already thinking about their writing, see? So we were working on the reading, but the writing was always there. So I was teaching them to read the simple words at the beginning, and at the same time, giving them the letters, because we work with letters, and you can do the same with yourself, giving them the letters and asking them to spell the word. So all of the letters you need to spell the word hat are here. Can you put them in the right order? We did that a lot. So the writing was always present, which was very important for them to understand about um, punctuation and rhythm and flow. So we kind of worked on both together, which is what I think you should be doing as a learner too. And then we moved on to small books, small books, but different to this kind of book, because this is for very little kids because of the rhyming and everything. So this one, for example, The Old Steam Train. We read this a lot. We've, it's a collection, actually. I think it came in a box with about seven, six or seven. So very, very simple. I love the introduction because it helps kids understand what's going to happen in the story in terms of the people involved. Again, in terms of, see, regarding about the people involved, the characters, that's the word you're looking for. So here we've got, this story is about Apple Tree Farm. And then we've got the people, Sam, Poppy, Mrs. Boot, Mr. Boot, and a steam train. So that's the introduction. In every single one of them, you've got the same thing. So the sentences, very big letters, which is great when you're learning to read, and it's great for you as well, because it's not your language, see? And so which, this helps a lot, I believe. And obviously you've got the colorful pictures everywhere. So on this one here, we've got no rhyming. No rhyming, I'm gonna read it and you're gonna see. One morning, Poppy and Sam were playing with Rusty. Rusty is the dog. Mrs. Boot called to them, we're going on a trip. So, no rhyming, it's just a story. So then we moved on to these. And then we moved on to this kind of book. This was a present from one of my students to Naomi. And we love it, it's so great. And so this one here, I'm gonna show you for you to understand what I mean. You still have lots of illustrations which are wonderful, but at the same time, and not a lot of text, not a lot of text, but the writing is a lot more sophisticated. It's a lot more sophisticated, but it's still quite a simple and short story so the kids can follow and learners can follow as well. So this one, for example. When Marie was a little girl, she made a vow to herself. She was going to be a scientist, not a princess. So you see here, a vow to herself. This is already much more sophisticated vocabulary, but it's quite simple. You can still understand, you know, you look it up, you look at the meaning, you check a translation if you need to, because it's a word, all words have translations. If you find the right one, then it's, it's not bad. The problem is getting a wrong translation, which you guys do sometimes. Um, so we moved on to this kind of book. And then, we moved on to books with more text and fewer illustrations and illustrations with no colour. So this is Dominic's book, okay? The Secret Explorers and the Lost Whales. So he got this as a present and we read together. Actually he read it but I was with him reading this and it took him about maybe a month to read it because we were reading before bed. But I'm going to show you what I mean. So. Black and white illustrations, you see? Lots more text. And you don't have an illustration on every page. So, you've got one here, but you've got nothing there. This is quite good, because then you've got this sort of dynamic that makes you get used to reading. Um, great for learners as well. I'm not recommending the book itself, I'm recommending the style of book for you to improve your reading. As for your writing, which is exactly the same thing that my kids did and do, and what I did and do. Number one, copying sentences. Copying words, number two. 
copying paragraphs, small paragraphs to begin with, number three. Number four, copying chunks. Copying with pen and paper, don't be lazy. It's not the same as typing. If you get the book and you say to yourself, I'm going to copy this chunk here, and you've got the book there and you're using your computer, it's not the same thing for your brain. Get your good old pen and paper and that's gonna help you tremendously. So remember this guys, your reading and your writing is something that you're going to be developing. So you start small and slowly you move on to something bigger. Some great guidance for you guys, write this down. Number one, play with synonyms. So if you're going to write, for example, you're going to write a sentence and you're going to write the word terrible, which is a word you know, supposedly, try to find another word that has the same meaning as terrible, but something that you don't use a lot, you might not even know, like appalling, awful, dreadful, and so on. So play with synonyms. Number two, pay attention to punctuation when you're reading. That gives you the right flow. When you've got the right flow, you understand the story. You remember the story better. You understand how to write better as well. Number three, copy the beginning of a sentence and create the rest, okay? There's a video about this, actually more than one, that's alive from about two or three years ago, where I spoke about something that to me makes a lot of sense, which is the CC theory. It's something that I came up with in my head that I'm sure other teachers or other learners have thought about before as well, which is C and C. First C, copy. Second C, create. First you copy, then you create. Because in order for you to be able to create, you have to have done plenty of copying. And that's the same for everything. You know, before, if you're a musician or an artist, before you write a very awesome song, you will have listened to lots of other wonderful songs so that you can start to understand how things work and then you can create your own. It's the same with writing. And remember, you're gonna start with something very simple when you start writing. It's the same with my kids, especially Dominic, who was always writing this. I like blah, blah, blah. Or I am blah, blah, blah. It's always I, 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 and it's always this kind of structure. And I'm always encouraging him to think outside the box and say, let's write a sentence that is not about you. Sometimes I give him the beginning of the sentence and I ask him to finish. So this kind of thing is going to be so helpful to you as a learner. Remember, you're not a kid, but if it's not your language, treat yourself as a child and you're going to see just how much you can learn and develop. I hope you have enjoyed today's video and I'll see you all next week. Thank you. Bye.